Hey, how's it going on YouTube? Welcome back to yet another amazing video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can improve your FPS, get better performance, and boost your FPS drastically in Frag Punk. I hit this guy MC out, so make sure to stick around till the end of this video. And with all that said, let's get started with the intro. Alright, step number one is heading over to settings on your PC. Once you're here, go down to gaming and then head over to game bar. Then you're gonna have to turn this thing off because game bar is actually an overlay service which keeps on running and consuming resources in the background whenever you're playing the games and disabling that will help you to fix the most of it. After that, head back to gaming, head over to game mode and simply turn this thing on. It will optimize your PC by turning things and applications off in the background, helping you to boost your FPS. Right beneath that, you'll find something called graphic settings. Click on that and then you'll find click change default to graphic setting. Click on that and enable hardware extracted GPU scheduling since this helps you to let your graphic card render the game and reduce your render latency. Next thing that you want to enable is optimizations for Windows games to reduce your input latency. Once that is done, go back to graphics and once you're here, head over to browse button and then you want to have to go to the download location of your game. Once you find it, open it up, then head over to the second folder which is fragpunk, then binaries, win64 and you'll find fragpunk.exe right over here. Click on the add button and then head over to its option. Now you're gonna have to select high performance to ensure that it utilizes your graphic card to render it. After that, click on save and close your setting. Next step is actually compatibility settings. And for that, head over to Steam on your PC. Right click on your game, head over to manage and then click on browse local files. Head over to the second folder, which is fragpunk, binaries, win64 and scroll down until you find fragpunk.exe. You're gonna have to right click on it, head over to properties, click on the compatibility tab and then you're gonna have to disable full screen optimizations over here. Click on change high DPI settings and then enable override high DPI scaling behavior. Click on OK, click on apply and that should be it. Simply close it and close this folder. But before we move ahead, I want to introduce you guys to this video sponsor, Ease Us Voice Wave. It's a real-time AI voice changer for gaming, online chat, streaming and a lot more which you guys can download for free from the link in the description below. Once you open up this application, it has a very simple interface with a ton of voices, sound effects and a lot of other cool features. The best part about this software is the AI feature where you guys can simply switch to any voice. I personally like young girl because it sounds perfect. And here I have selected the volume and the pitch to make it sound more filtered and accurate. Here is how I sound like as a young girl. Once again, I use this quite a lot while gaming or pranking my friends and it works perfectly. You guys can simply select your microphone and your headphone and then you can enable AI smooth mode. If you want your voices to be more smoother, you can add key binds and a lot of other cool stuff. And they have over 300 voices to choose from including famous celebrities, game characters, and a lot more. I would recommend you guys to go check out Isis Voice Wave for free from the link in the description below. Next step is deanimating windows and for that simply search for adjust the appearance and performance of windows. Once you're here, click on the custom button and then select save taskbar thumbnail previews, show thumbnails instead of icons, show window contents while dragging and smooth edges of screen fonts. These four settings will help you to minimize the basic look of your windows and disable all kind of unnecessary animations on your PC which consumes your resources. This won't help you to gain a lot of FPS, it will definitely help you to make your windows appear a little smoother. Once that is done, head over to the next tab that is in the advanced tab. When I have to select programs in the process restructuring and for the virtual memory, when I have to click on the change button. Then you have to find your local disk C and for the initial size, you're gonna have to set this thing to 1361. This is an optimal value that I have found out by rigorous testing. And for the maximum size, you want to head over to your calculator. Right over here, you have to multiply your RAM with 1024. This will help you to get your memory in megabyte. Once you get this value, divide it by two and the new value that you get over here is what you have to paste in the maximum size. This will help you to utilize your ROM as your RAM if your RAM is completely utilized by your PC. Once again, if it is giving you any kind of performance issues, simply check on this automatically manage paging file size for all drives and then click on apply. Otherwise, you're gonna have to click on set, click on OK and that should be it. Next step is creating a restore point and this is super beneficial. Simply search for create a restore point on your PC and once you are here, go down to find your local disk C. Click on create and name it fragpunk just so you can remember it. I highly recommend you guys now to skip this step if you want to restore all of your settings back to normal without any kind of data loss. 
Once that is done, simply click on close and close system property. Next up is the Fragpunk FPS pack. I'll be leaving a link to this down in the description below. You guys can also join my Discord server for a detailed downloading tutorial or a direct download link. Over here, you'll find in six simple folders. Let us start with the first one that is our CPU priority. In this, I have left two files that is AMD and Intel folder. Over here, you have to select the CPU that you use. I currently use an AMD CPU, so I need to double click and run the AMD CPU priority. And this will help you to set up the correct D word value for your process to improve its priority and performance. If you have an Intel CPU, you have to do the same for this folder. Second folder over here is your game optimization in which I have left three registries for which I would recommend you guys to leave your PC specs down in the comments below and I'll be telling you guys which registry you need to choose right over here. Once you're done with that, third folder is RAM optimization and over here it will help you to set up the correct D word values for the optimal performance of your RAM and this will unlock your RAM's performance as well. So you have to select the RAM that you are using. I have left a ton of presets over here. To know your RAM, you can simply search for system information and then look down for installed physical memory. Now I have 32 GB RAM, so I need to apply this registry. I have already done that. Once again, if that doesn't give you an optimal performance, you can always use the reset to default to head back to the default settings. Fourth folder over here is the power plan settings in which I have left import ultimate performance power plan. What you have to do is simply right click in on it as administrator and it will run this command right on your command prompt. It will be automatically done and once you're done with that, head over to the power plans over here. You'll find something called show additional power plans. Simply click on that and once you're over here, you have to select ultimate performance that should be added in this list. It will disable all kinds of power saving features which might be causing performance issues. This will help you to disable those features and allow your PC to run on the maximum throttle. Once again, if you're on laptops, this might cause heating issues so you can set it to balanced or high performance if that is available. Fifth folder over here is the unwanted services and I recommend you guys to disable every single one of them. I have left a ton of registries over here which will help you to disable all unnecessary services right off your PC and this includes Bluetooth and printer services. So if you use any of them, kindly leave them. And if you want to revert any of these back again, head over to the revert registries folder and then you guys can revert them back. Last folder over here is the useful programs in which I have left three programs on your PC. First one is clean temporary files. You want to have to right click in on it as administrator. This will open up a simple command prompt which will ask you to delete all temporary files. What you have to do is simply press any key on your keyboard and this will start clearing all cache files off of your PC. It will help you to improve your local disk C It will help you to improve the performance of your Windows drive. Next one is MSI mode utility 3.0. You want to have to right click in on it as administrator. This software primarily focuses on your graphic card and improves its performance without overclocking it. You have to find your graphic card and then ensure that the MSI button next to it is checked. Then for the interrupt priority, you want to have to set this thing to high and then click on apply. This will help you to improve the performance of your graphic card by allowing it to handle higher interrupts. Last one is quick CPU setup right over here. You want to have to run it and then, and then you want to have to open up quick CPU on your PC. Once you open this thing up, you'll find a ton of things over here. It looks complicated, but it's really not. Trust me, what you have to do is click on this maximum performance button right over here and then click on the accept button. All of the changes will be automatically done. Power plan right over here, you wanna have to set this thing to ultimate performance as we did because it is going to change your ultimate performance plan. So you wanna have to set this to ultimate performance and then click on set as active. Then for the power mode, you wanna have to set this thing to max performance. Then you wanna have to make sure that all of these core parking frequency scaling turbo boost and performance indexes are all the way up to 100%. Click on the apply button and once all of the changes are done, you wanna have to close this program. Next step is disabling all background applications on Windows and it is very beneficial. In Windows 10, you have an option to disable that right in the setting, but in Windows 11, you wanna have to search for edit group policies. So simply search for edit group policy over here and this step will only be available for Windows Pro users. And once you're here, head over to computer configuration and then administrative template. Right in here, you'll find Windows components and then app privacy. Over here, you'll find let Windows apps run in the background. You wanna have to double click to open this policy up. Make sure that this is set to enabled. Default for all applications should be set to force deny and this will deny all of the applications running in the background. It will help you to save your system resources and improve the performance. Next step is disabling unwanted startup applications on your PC. And trust me, it is a really beneficial step. For that, you have to press Control, Shift and Escape all together and then Task Manager will open right in front of you. Over here, you wanna have to head over to Startup Apps and then select the application that you do not use right after the boot of your PC. The lesser these applications are, the faster your PC boots up and the less number of applications running in the background right after you boot up your PC. 
So whenever you are in the game, less number of applications consume less number of resources, thus giving you better performance. I have kept most of my applications disabled over here and only kept the ones which I use frequently. Once all of that is done, simply close it. Next, you want to have to reduce your input latency completely. And for that, head over to device manager. And once you're here, you have to head down to system devices. In here, you'll find something called composite bus enumerator, which you want to have to right click and set it to disable. Then you'll find something called high precision event timer. You want to have to disable that as well. Other two things are not available on my PC, but if they are available on your PC, disable numeric data processor and SM bus controller. All four of these things are responsible for inducing your input latency and disabling them will help you to fix most of that input lag. Over here, you'll find something called generic USB hub. What you have to do is right click on that, head over to its properties then head down to power management then uncheck allow the computer to turn off this device to save power. Click on OK and do the same for every single one of them. Keyboard and your mouse are also connected to these hubs and disabling these properties will help you to disable power saving features on these hubs to reduce your input latency drastically. You also want to do the same thing to your USB root hub and this is actually the hub of your motherboard. So you're gonna have to uncheck these things right over here as well. And once all of that is done, you guys can simply close your device manager and now you guys can drop into the game with the best in game setting. Okay, once you're in your game, what you have to do is head over to the escape button and then click on settings over here. In the general settings, you'll find something called features which offers you anti-motion sickness. You wanna have to click on apply and this will ensure that all of the anti-motion sickness features are enabled because that is going to reduce the motion and the less the motion is the stable your frame rate is after that you want to head over to the video settings over here and for the display screen i would recommend you guys to go with the native screen and a full screen mode right over here aspect ratio should also be your native monitor aspect ratio and the display resolution should be highest available for your monitor once again you guys can play on lower resolution to improve your fps fov i would recommend you guys to go with 100 because lower fov will help you to keep the number of details lesser compared to higher fovs and it will also help you to improve the performance however if you guys are oriented for better gameplay you can slide it up to 110 for better visibility filter i would recommend you guys to go with vivid it just adds up a little bit of color to your gameplay and does not really impact your performance then you'll have something called post processing intensity you want to have to keep it to normal menu frame rate limit i have set this into 60 fps and gameplay frame rate limit i have set this into unlimited however you guys can cap your gameplay frame rate limit because capped limits will help you to improve performance out of focus frame rate limit i have set this into 30 fps over here brightness and sharpness should be your personal preference scroll down and you'll find something called vertical sync let's turn this thing off because it is actually v-sync anti-tearing i would recommend you guys to turn this thing off if you are looking for extra fps because it is going to limit your fps but if you guys want a stutter free and a tear free gameplay experience you can turn this thing on as well graphics api always go with direct x12 because it offers you a ton of features that direct x11 doesn't go down and you'll find minimalist graphics you wanna have to turn this thing on it is going to scale your graphics down from high resolution textures to minimalist textures which is actually important for frame rates over here you'll find something called material complexity which i have set this thing to simplified light complexity is also set to simplified scene saturation should be simplified as well effects complexity is where you have to go with minimalist dead effects should be turned off damage numbers i have kept it turned on ui simplification is also on and ui animation reduction is off after that you'll find graphics quality setting over here don't go with the auto settings head over to quality presets and set this thing to custom then right beneath that you'll find something called upsampling and anti-aliasing and if you have an NVIDIA graphic card, go with NVIDIA DLSS 4. And if you have an AMD graphic card, go with AMD FSR 3. Both of them help you to improve the performance drastically. And if you guys don't have any of these, if you have the Intel HD graphics, go with Intel XESS. Or you guys can simply go with TAA if you do not have a graphic card. NVIDIA DLSS 4. The preset should be set to quality and the model preset should be set to prioritize speed. Frame generation should be strictly turned off because I understand it is actually free FPS but at the cost of input latency. And if you guys are okay with that, you can turn frame 
generation on is going to add a lot of frames it is going to improve going to drastically boost your frame rate but then i would only recommend you guys to turn it on if you have an rtx 40 series graphic card or above then you'll find something called low latency mode and if you have an nvidia graphic card set it to nvidia reflex and the dlss4 reflex you're gonna have to set this into on plus boost mesh quality i have kept it too high but you guys can go with medium shadow quality medium and post processing low you can completely turn down the shadow quality as well to improve the performance once that is done simply click on a to apply all of these settings and once all of that is done you guys can simply go back and enter your game with the best fps possible so that was it for this video guys i hope i could have helped you out if i could have make sure to leave a like and smash it subscribe button because it is going to help me a lot we are really close to 250,000 subscribers and i trust you all please help me to grow the channel and we'll see you all in another amazing video until then stay tuned keep watching Fox and peace out